Today, I'm going to talk about the importance of surrounding yourself with beauty. Yes, beauty. So important as you move into the next chapter of your life. Welcome everyone to the Extraordinary Women Show with Sherry Harmel, that's me. This is a place where we talk about topics that are relevant to women who are over 50 and striving to create a fabulous next chapter. Well, life often becomes more complicated when we reach a certain age. Maybe in your next chapter, you've got a big change that you want to implement, or maybe you've been forced into making a change that you maybe didn't want so much. It could have been the ending of something. Regardless, what we often do when we're going through change or we're creating something new is we remove beauty from our lives as though beauty is a luxury, an add-on, something we don't really need, like uh, sprinkles on the top of a cupcake, as an example. But today, what I'm going to talk about is how surrounding yourself with beauty is so important and much, much, much more than a frivolous add-on. Beauty, my friends, is gorgeous. Yes, we all know that but it also impacts your emotional well-being. Being conscious of putting beauty in the environment that surrounds you is much needed support that you are going to need to make your next chapter amazing, make your next chapter incredible, something bigger and more wonderful than you ever imagined. Now, if you're sitting there and going, I'm not so sure, Sherry, is believable here. Well, I want you to listen to my story. After, and this was about 10 years ago, I had finished an almost three year long divorce. And that was the time when I actually decided I want to go to Paris. I had been before, but it was sort of like, I just listened to my intuition and went. So I got on a plane and off I went to Paris. I was exhausted, ladies physically, emotionally, and mentally. I was tired and heavier than I had ever been. I eat sugar when I'm stressed, and it was three years of perpetual stress and therefore sugar. Emotionally, I was so very sad. And to say I viewed life as just kind of a glass that's half empty would be an understatement. Part of my sadness was that I had convinced myself there wasn't going to be much to look forward to in my post-divorce years, to say nothing of anything truly exciting or joyful. Plus, I was tired. I was tired of fighting. I was tired of thinking, strategizing, defending. I just wanted peace. And for some reason, my gut said, go to Paris. Bizarre, I know. But sometimes we have to listen to those little messages we get. Well, on my first post-divorce trip to Paris, I went to the Museum of Decorative Arts, or the Musée des Arts Décoratifs is what they call it in, in Paris. But it really is the Museum of Decorative Arts. And that was the first time I had ever been in a museum of that type. And for those of you that do not know, I didn't. Decorative arts refers both to beautiful objects like tiny silver statues of animals, to vases, to clothing, to the most gorgeous beds you've ever seen, but it's also more than beautiful objects. The objects that are in a decorative arts museum must also have been usable at some point in history. Think of a bed. Think of, you know, the little silver animals were probably salt and pepper shakers. Um, you, you've never seen more beautiful bidets than you, if you go uh, to the Museum of Decorative Arts in Paris. Incredible. So you find these super interesting displays, but also there are crazy exhibits that are usually sponsored by the Museum of Decorative Arts. And the current one is on hair. Think about hair and how we wear our hair, how hair is interpreted what hair symbolizes throughout history. Years ago, I attended one on shoes. It was wild. 
You've never seen so many different kinds of shoes and how shoes have evolved again over history. They actually had a, a pair and they were so tiny of Napoleon Bonaparte's shoes. It was, it was fascinating. But as I walked through the various galleries on that first visit, I was not only in shock because it was all truly beyond any of my expectations, I was immersed in all these different kinds of beauty, you know, the frivolous to the functional, as I call it. But what was interesting is that slowly, as I walked through the galleries, I left behind all the events of the previous three years. And I can remember that day like it was yesterday, because as I walked and I looked and observed and read, I suddenly realized that I was feeling happier. I was feeling more hopeful. And I even began to wonder, you know, could there be possibilities in my future that I hadn't thought of? Could there be unexpected joy yet to be experienced? And that, my friends, is why we are talking about beauty today. Because in that museum visit in Paris, I realized that beauty has the power to change you know, your emotional state along with, you know, viewing something that's absolutely gorgeous. Beauty has the ability to expand all that is possible for your next chapter. Now, people don't talk much about that side of beauty. Even Parisians don't. Parisians actually don't talk about beauty much. And I think it's because they take it for granted. They've grown up in a culture that honors beauty. Now, America, in contrast, is a, is a new country. We are a baby country in many ways. And our country was built mostly by poor immigrants. We don't have this long, long history. Think of Paris when Haussmann came in, ripped up all the streets of Paris and created the avenues and the boulevards and the, the um, gorgeous, gorgeous architecture that you see today. We don't have that kind of history. We don't have enough to ever think about, gosh, how could we make our cities much more beautiful? It's only recently that we've started to think about gardens and cities and how important that is. Somewhere along the way, Americans came, you know, not only don't hold on to our history, even though it's short, we don't hold on to it. But currently, it seems like we have this, I don't know, false belief that minimalism is what truly makes us happy. Well, I'm going to dispute that concept because I think in contrast, beauty is what makes us happy. And I'm going to take you back to nature. Nature is a perfect example. Nature is complicated. Nature is intricate. It's detailed. It can be big. It can be small. It can be colorful or it can be subdued, but it's always beautiful. Look at the complexity of a flower like the dahlia or the grand strength of a big old chestnut, chestnut tree. That beauty that we experience when we go out into nature actually calms us. And if we let it and we get down and we really look at the flower or we look at the, the garden or we look at the tree, the bark, the leaves, it takes us to a place of awe that actually fills us with joy. So whether you're viewing the beauty of a woodland, prairie grass, or a field of wildflowers, you know, we somehow intuitively know, and that calms us, that whatever happens in the world, nature lives on. And nature brings us, humans, both joy and hope. And part of it is the beauty of nature, that connection, that, I don't know, emotional connection to the gorgeousness that is nature. And every time, honestly, even today, 10 years later, when I come back from a long trip to Paris, I have to shift because I think about the impact of beauty on my well-being. And I think that relates to all of us. 
Now, as I thought about this and thought about the ability for beauty to not only, you know, stimulate us visually, but also the well-being side of beauty, I thought, oh my gosh, this must be a well-researched topic, right? It must be, everyone must know about this. Yet when I Googled, of course, you know, the encyclopedia online, when I Googled beauty and emotional health, put those two together, all I got were articles on beautiful faces, beautiful bodies, and how to get one. There was one tiny little article, and I think it was a, a number of years old, and it was in Scientific American, that talked about the connection between beauty and emotion. Now, this article was very small, and it was stating that scientists today cannot pinpoint where in the brain beauty is actually recognized. Now, this makes sense, right? Using Paris as an example, no matter how many people I ask, and you'll hear it on these podcasts, and I also talk about it sometimes, you know, when, when I'm getting together with people in Paris, I ask, you know, what is it about Paris? Why is Paris still the number one travel destination in the world? Why are all those bonjour effect books such great sellers? And not one single person can give me one specific reason. And I finally realized that's because there are so many reasons. Paris triggers all of our senses, the visual, the touch, the smells, the sounds, and of course, taste. And sometimes we get multiple senses all at once. And that, I'm gonna circle back, but that possibly is our clue as to why no one can pinpoint exactly where beauty is processed in the brain. It depends. It depends on which of your senses are being triggered. Then there is that subjectivity question of beauty. For example, what clothing styles we like, what interior and exterior home designs we like, what colors we like, what cars we like, it all differs from one person to the next. But because the French culture in Paris specifically is so much about beauty, it triggers something gorgeous for everyone, regardless in the variations of how we define beauty. And is beauty frivolous? Unnecessary? No. Think about that combination. Step back. Think about that combination of beauty and functionality. The company that pops in my head is Apple Computer. When Steve Jobs started Apple, we all loved their products, mostly because they were more attractive than any other piece of technology up to that point. PCs were clunky. PC laptops were ugly, truly, um, not so attractive even today. Apple, part of the mystique of Apple, I think, is not just the technology side, but it's also the design side. It's pretty. They're beautiful. Now, Steve Jobs himself was not even a technology guy. Steve Wozniak was the great technology brain behind the Apple computer. Steve Jobs was a visual and functional creative designer. And that is what differentiates Apple from Microsoft products even today. So Apple, maybe more than any other company out there, made us aware that we can have beauty along with functionality. I think Steve Jobs changed all that, shifted us, something maybe Tim Cook needs to remember. <laughs> but still, over and over, we humans, for whatever reason, downgrade the value of beauty and treat beauty as a luxury, not, certainly not, an emotional necessity. Think about what we've done to hospitals and prisons and public housing. We've removed every bit of beauty as though it didn't matter to the humans involved. Now, I digressed a little bit. Please forgive me. So back to my story. When this sad, then sad, depressed, overweight, feeling invisible woman landed in the beauty capital of the world, I realized my outlook on life 
and what was in front of me had shifted. Every day on that trip, I would go out for long walks. I noticed the buildings around me, and as I walked through the parks, or jardins as they call them, I'd see the flowers, the plantings, the symmetry. Sometimes I'd just sit on a bench and watch life go on around me. I'd admire the green Luxembourg chairs, which are not just outdoor chairs. There's something special about them. I'd see children playing with their so pretty boats on the Luxembourg, you know, in the little pond in the middle of the Luxembourg garden. I'd see people suntanning, reading. And then as I'd walk down the streets, I'd peer into shop windows at clothing that had that little French extra, a special ruffle at the wrist, clean lines, fabric that hung beautifully off the body, latches on purses, and the hats. Oh my God, I could do a book on French uniform hats. You have to check it out. The hats of the firemen, the hats of the various branches of the police, the valets, the doormen, Honestly, the French have the best uniform hats in the entire world. But slowly on this first trip of beauty immersion, I realized that my entire way of thinking had begun to shift. I started to feel hope and excitement for this next chapter of my life. I began to contem contemplate that or ask myself, I should say, that beautiful phrase, what if? Then, and this might surprise you, I noticed that I even began to walk differently. I felt more energetic and even more confident. Now, that first trip was around two weeks long, so my beauty bucket was filled to the brim. And when I returned home, I paid closer attention to look for beauty around me and create beauty around me. I realized that no matter where I was, Beauty positively impacted my emotional state, and I believe that today. A part of me thinks this is probably why women find so much joy when we are in Paris and why we miss Paris when we leave and we buy all those books, you know, about what life is like in Paris and design books and you name it. We love it. I believe that what we are actually after what it is that we love and crave about all things French are the emotional benefits of beauty. Now that you know that though, you can embrace beauty and get all of the yummy benefits of beauty no matter where you live, city or country, small house or big, rental or ownership. I want you to ask yourself, how can I bring more beauty into my life? And start with your home. Start with one room in your home. Maybe the room that you spend the most time in. What could you do to bring more beauty into that room? But maybe, back up a little bit, you have to ask yourself, how do you define beauty? What are your must-haves for beauty? And everyone's a little bit different. If it's beautiful paintings, like you love certain kinds of paintings, go to consignment shops, yard sales, auctions. I'm telling you, you will find beautiful artwork at amazing prices. If it's flowers, go to your local nursery, buy flowers that you love, or cut flowers that you can practice arranging. Notice what makes you stop and say, oh, oh, that's so beautiful and bring whatever that is home with you. Then there are the colors. Colors are incredibly important to how we define beauty and our emotional health. I am in my new apartment, which needs to get repainted. Actually, the entire apartment needs to be redecorated. It has not been decorated for over 30 years. And this color behind me is actually driving me crazy. And I noticed that it's actually impacting my emotional health. So if the renovation of my apartment is going to take longer than I think, I might buy a can of paint and paint that wall behind me so that I feel happier. Because I want you to notice what colors appeal to you. 
What appeals to you is important. That's your definition of beauty. Also, go out and buy some magazines. Go on to home, you know, home design or garden magazines, actually the paper magazines. Scro flip through them and notice what makes you stop. What makes you say, oh my God, that is so gorgeous. I could see myself in that room. You will get so much information about how you uniquely define beauty by doing so. You don't, and I've tried this experiment, you don't get the exact same feeling when you go on Pinterest or House or whatever other online websites you might use for design ideas. There's something about the page and the colors of an actual magazine that makes you stop and recognize what it is that you really love about that particular room. Now remember that the colors that you're drawn to today may potentially change over time. So don't be afraid to repaint, recover, redesign. You know, I recently sold my Boston Seaport, seaport home. The background, that's why the background is different. It, in that particular apartment, I had surrounded myself with really strong colors. I had strong corals, strong, I even had something of this color, but it was in a bathroom, um, but it was strong blues. It was just after COVID and I must have felt like I just needed strong colors at that point. I sold that apartment and then I purchased this one back in my old neighborhood. I'm now just across from the Boston Public Garden because I realized that that garden is so beautiful, I need to be in it almost every day. Now, wouldn't you notice, wouldn't you uh, be surprised to know that I suddenly want calmer colors? I'm incredibly drawn to greens and blues and camel, and I cannot wait to redecorate my apartment. So I'm at the magazine stage right now. Now, that's colors and design. What if you love China and crystal, like I do, kind of a little bit of an addiction, and you want to have, start to have little dinner parties, or you want to make your dinner special even when it's just you. Now, if you want something new for your next chapter life, I want you to think about what is it? Why do I want that? Why is that going to add something to my life? And don't don't go into that mindset or let your mind say, oh, you don't need that because you can go to, con again, consignment shops or auctions. I'm telling you, you can buy crystal, china, very inexpensively, um, but something that you absolutely love and actually makes you feel joy at a fraction of what that might cost if you were to buy it new. Remember though, that beauty involves all of our senses. You know, it's taste, it's sight, it's smell and more, which is why, you know, entertaining is, can be such a fun experience. And, and in many ways is a subject of so many books because there's something beautiful about walking into a room, having your friends join you in that space, putting on, you know, bringing out the beautiful china, bringing out the crystal, bringing out, you know, and if you bought it in a consignment shop, you're not going to save it for that one special day, whatever that might be, and creating a wonderful meal, an aperitif, appetizers, whatever it might be. And then don't forget sound. That's one of the other senses that triggers positive emotions within us as we begin to move forward to create our next chapter. Create some great playlists for yourself and maybe categorize them by the various moods. You know, music, like any other kind of beauty, transforms us, takes us to another place. Whenever I watch, I have to admit, whenever I watch uh, Ramin Kamalu sing, I vow to thee, my country, I have happy tears in my eyes. Sometimes I just have to put them on YouTube. <laughs> it's like a, you know, a daily mantra. Or when I listen to Cher saying, you haven't seen the last of me, I feel strong. Create playlists for your dinners, your aperitifs, your book club. 
Now, if mo music can motivate us to keep on running or keep on walking, which many athletes use, can you imagine what it has the power to do when you are creating your next chapter? I've listed a few of my favorite songs down in the show notes, but I'm sure you, you easily have a, a, a list of your own. But in conclusion, when you jump into my next chapter, process step two, I have a process, believe it or not, for creating your next chapter. And step two is imagining all that you really want. Imagine what it could be. Embrace, when you're at that point, embrace bringing more beauty into your life. Trigger all of your senses and let yourself imagine those wild possibilities. Trust me, you'll see ideas of something much bigger and better than you ever thought possible. Believe my friends. Now, I wanna thank you for tuning in and I hope that, you know, hearing about beauty and thinking about beauty, actually you embrace it, bring it into your life as you begin to think about how do I want my next chapter to go? And don't for forget to subscribe to the Extraordinary Women Show. This is a podcast, but both in audio form on whatever platform you choose to listen, but also on video on YouTube. So follow and do comment it matters, as you all know, to platforms today. And plus, I just love hearing your thoughts. And remember, extraordinary women make their next chapter dreams come true. Abiento.